both of those almost certain to be on the ballot come 2024. Yep. Joining us now, Chairman of the Democratic National Committee, Jamie Harrison. Mr. Chairman, thank you for joining us. You're in Miami, the site of the Republican debate tonight on NBC. Let me ask you first about last night, though, the results you saw in Ohio, in Kentucky, in Virginia. What happened at the polls? Well, uh, Willie, it's so good to see you. And Joe and Mika, you know my mom says hello. Listen, bottom line is this. MAGA extremism lost and lost big time. And the Biden-Harris coalition, uh, the one that people have counted out time and time again, I keep telling folks, stop counting out Joe Biden because we will just teach you, as my good friend Antoine says, that you don't know how to count. This is a president that has had the best midterm in for an incumbent president uh, since 1934. And when you couple it with this off-year election, best in 20 years. And so we are we're coming together. We are focused on the issues that are important to the American people. And we are showing the Republican Party how, how extreme they are. You know, these elections are about hope versus fear. It's about progress versus chaos. And we see the chaos that Donald Trump has brought to the Republican Party. And time and time again, as long as Donald Trump is a part of this party and leading the Republican Party, they're going to continue to lose at the ballot box. Chairman Harrison, before you uh, got in place, we played some clips at the top of the hour of Donald Trump through the years boasting about overturning Roe versus Wade, that it was he who put those three justices in place and that that is why they ended after 50 years this right. Uh, is, will that figure into your campaign strategy going forward here? It's, it's really at the heart of the campaign strategy. We are going to paint the Republican Party for the extremists that they are. Under Donald Trump, the ripping away of freedoms. I'm 47 years old, and for the first time in my lifetime, Americans have less freedoms than they, than they, they had at one point. And so we have to paint that picture for the American people. We have to show that these people want to take away the freedom of women to control their own bodies, that these people, the Republican Party, the MAGA extremists, want to chip away at Social Security and Medicare. They, they want to define the LGBTQ community as some others. And that's extreme. And that's not where the American people are. And so it's really important for us to make that case. And Joe Biden is leading that case. Kamala Harris is leading that case for the American people. And as a result, we are winning special election after special election, midterm election after midterm election. And we're going to win again in 2024. Well, Mr. Chairman, that's why I wanted to ask you about um, polls come out. Democrats get freaked out. I'm not just talking about 2023. I'm talking about 2022. Everybody's saying there's a red wave coming. Meek and I and Willie and Jonathan and all of us were saying, doesn't really feel like a red wave, but they were all freaked out because of the red wave. You had people saying in 2020, after Iowa, Joe Biden too old to win. After New Hampshire, Joe Biden's a joke. It's all over. Then Joe Biden came to your state. Woo! Hold Boy, my beer. That was fast. Hold my beer. Joe Biden's <laughs> the nominee. Then they go, he's an old man living in his basement. He can never win. Joe Biden won. Oh, then, you know, again, 22 red wave. Then after the 22 red wave, forgive me for going on so long, and I hope your mother will forgive me. Say hi to your mom for us. Uh, but then after 2022, about three weeks later, they go, Joe Biden, okay, that's great, but Joe Biden's too old. Then he gives a State of the Union address. People go, well, wait, he's pretty good. Then they go, he's too old. And then Joe <laughs> Biden becomes the first president in American history to go to two active war zones. I mean, I could go on and on. I won't. I just, I mean, at some point, like, when are the Democrats going to get it? This guy's always underestimated, and he's the only president that's ever seen this sort of success in three successive elections when he's president of the United States. Well, well Joe, you, you're spot on. Listen, the hand-wringing has to stop. As I, I often say, I, I am not a member of the hand-wringing caucus. This is about the door-knocking caucus, the phone call-making caucus, the text-making caucus. We got to do everything that we can to reach out to our voters to make sure that they understand how Joe Biden and, De and Democrats have delivered for them. 
this president, this administration has had more legislative accomplishments, accomplishments than any probably since the Great Society. And folks need to understand that. Think about the representation. I hear also, well, what has Joe Biden done in the black community? Think about it. We got a black vice president. We got a, a, an African-American Democratic leader about to be the first black speaker of the House because we're going to take back the House in 2024. We just, in Virginia, because of the election last night, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, the heart of the Confederacy, a black woman who's going to be the Democratic leader there mm -hmm. and the first black speaker of the House. We got a black woman sitting on the Supreme Court, and I can go on and on and on. We are delivering, and the represent representation is happening under the leadership of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. There's a lot to celebrate. There's still a lot to, to be done. As the president says, we yeah. have to finish the job. But I'm proud of being uh, and working with Joe Biden each and every day. DNC Chairman Jamie Harrison, thank you. And hi to your mom. Thanks for being on this morning.